Okay, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of how to use the self-checking practice templates in your own activities. If you haven't already done so, you're going to want to uh, create a copy and edit this activity. All right, once you get into this activity, you'll see there are two templates. We will look at the first one and the second one separately and take a look at some of the CL code that is in there. So in this first template, let's just see how it works. Uh, it's relatively simple. There are three questions. Students answer the questions in the table and as they answer the questions, the check mark appears and if they want, they can show their work on the left side of the screen. Okay, so let's see how this goes. So um, you can have any number of questions here. I've, I've chosen to put the questions right in the note. And all the work for checking the table gets done here in the comp computation layer code, the CL code for the table. So I've got three lines here for the table and let's see what those are. So it's looking for an answer. Uh, and it's got something here called cell content and you know when we that is the check mark for the correctness of the answer so if you look in the table in the cl code for the table here it is uh, we've got three lines for that cell content so this is the information in the last column of that table is basically checking whether the answer is correct and if so it puts a check mark otherwise it has an n there and so each line in the table requires one of these lines here. So this is telling us that it's cell content for the row one and position column three of the table. And it's looking for when the table one, we call that table well one, uh, then cell numeric value of row one column two is equal to 15. That's correct, otherwise it's no. And so we have to have one of those lines for every line in the table. Right now there are three lines in the table, so there are three lines here. And we'll note that in this question, uh, the answer is one-third, and for this we need an exact answer for checking purposes, but because one-third is a repeating decimal, we're going to give it a range here of somewhere between these two values. Uh, and so in that position of the table, we're looking for any number between these two values to be deemed correct. This last little bit here is just to show in the teacher dashboard that a student has correctly answered all three questions. And so it basically checks that this, this, and this is all correct, all four of those things in this table. And once those are all correct in the teacher dashboard, it's going to show a check mark. Now, if I wanted to add a fourth question, I'd have to basically follow these steps. I'd add my new question, what is 3 times 15? And then I come to my table and I'm going to hit enter to add a new line. I'm going to put my marker here for D. And you'll notice that there's nothing here for cell content because we have to do that in the CL code. So I'm going to go into the code now. So I need to add a new line here. And so what I can do is I can just take one of these lines and copy it and paste it underneath. This is now, you'll notice it's giving me some warnings here because it's, it's duplicate, but now I want this to be in row four position three, and this is also going to be row four as well. And the answer is 45, so I can change that to 45. And now I have to add that feature in here for the teacher dashboard, so I'm just gonna copy this bit right here, add an and, paste that in. And so now, You'll see there's the cell content. When I go into the preview, it's added that extra piece there. And if I put 45 to check that, it checks out OK. All right, let's take a look at the second template. So this one is a little bit different in that I've put the questions here as an image. 
Still, they can draw on it, but it's an image here. So the background, I've chosen a custom image that I've made elsewhere, and I've imported into this space. If you do that, you should just make your image square in dimensions, and it should fit perfectly in there. You'll notice there's no question here written because that's all in the CL code for the note, which we'll show in a bit. And in the table, I've got some extra things I want kids to put out there. Uh, let's see how this works. So I'm gonna to go to the preview, and basically it's, it's an addition question. I want kids to enter the fractions seen in the question. And as soon as it does that, it shows that that's correct. And the answer in this case, and it'll take multiple forms. So this is going to be seven fifths, and it shows correct there. So let's take a look at what the CL code looks like for this. So you'll see the CL code here is much like the previous slide. The only difference here is because I've used fractions, I don't want it to actually calculate the value of the fraction. So I've added this a little bit here. If you're not doing anything with fractions, you can leave that out entirely. But there's our cell content for that checking piece. You'll notice that it's got this um, range here for the repeating decimal fraction, and it's got the is correct statements here. So that is all exactly the same. The part that's different here is the stuff that's happening in the note. So again, you'll notice that here in the note, it says this text is replaced by the CL code. If you go back to the preview, it's got some instructions and it's got this value here and you'll notice when I put the fractions in, you may have noticed this before. So there's the four fifths and there's the three fifths. As soon as I put that three fifths in, this changes, give me an indication that those values are correct. So when we look at the CL code, it's made up of a few things. So first of all, down here at the bottom, this is the actual text that shows up there. There's the instructions for the question. And then it's got these little notations here for message one, message two, and message three. There's a message for each line of the table. And here's what that message looks like. So message one, and these are just unique labels. So I could call this whatever I want. As long as I call this, I could call this message 100 if I wanted to. And as long as I rename it down here as message 100, everything is gonna work the same. So we can get rid of that guy, just so you know that. And it's basically saying when the table two, the value in uh, row one, column two is equal to 0 0.8. And in row one position, column three, column three, 0 0.6, then it's gonna say that the given fractions for question number one are correct. Otherwise, it's gonna say the given fractions are not correct or entered properly yet. And it has one of those for each one. And so basically it checks this each time and adds the correct response in this position in the note on the fly. So again, if you decide that you want it to have one or two intermediate things here, I've got two intermediate values that students have to enter that are gonna give information as correct or not in here, and the answer shows correct or not here. If you wanna have a question where they have to put something intermediate in, this is a way that you could do it. And one thing I didn't mention on the previous slide is there's a little bit of CL code here as well. This is just basically for that teacher dashboard check so it doesn't look at the graph or the image or this element to see if there needs to be something correct there or not. So this is just a section where it says read only is true and you'll note that in here as well. So that's just so that it's only checking the table for correctness and that's it. Now, if you actually wanna use this in your, uh, your own activity, you can just take one of these slides, select it, hit copy, so I did control C to copy or command C if you're on a Mac and I go to my new activity and I can just control or command V to paste it into that activity and then I'm gonna change it however I like. Note, however, that if I wanna use this more than once, if I paste this again, it's gonna give me some errors here because it's looking for some unique names for in, in this case, the table one. And so I would call this now table two and then I have to remember to change all these table ones here as well so that those are table two in all the places that it looks for it. So that's it. 
Um, hopefully that allows you to make some self-checking, some relatively simple, we're not talking about complex questions here, some relatively simple self-checking questions in any topic that you wish.